Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dwayne here from Disc Golf Dummies. Today, I'm gonna to be doing my in the bag video. Uh, you saw Brandon's a couple weeks ago, and now we figure it'd be a good idea for you to check out what I throw and you know, what what gave me the, the edge in the tournament that I recently played in in Hillsborough, New Brunswick. I tied for first, which was fantastic. It was my second ever PGJ event and shot the, the rounds of my life. It was it was pretty pretty special moment for me. So I'll kind of give you some insight to when I would play certain discs and hopefully you get a little bit from, from the information I give. Enjoy. Also, I want to mention thank you to everybody for your support. We've reached the 100 subscriber mark and we will be giving away that Page Pierce Stalker. So stay tuned to the end of the video and I will explain how to enter that draw. So now, without further ado, let's get into the bag. First, the bag itself. I am using the Dynamic Discs Trooper bag. Uh, I find it extremely comfortable. The straps are very nice and padded, um, lots of room. You know, it, I have this thing jam packed and it's super comfy. You know, it doesn't hurt my back and none of that. It's, you know, very, very, very nice bag. Uh, and the price is right too. I believe, you know, you can get these things for under $50. Um, and it holds a lot of discs, as you'll see in my bag, uh, how many I actually shoved in here. Uh, a couple accessory sides too, you got a side pouch down here. I throw my, my tick spray uh, or you know bug spray, whatever. I got a few pencils in here. And also I have a few mini markers as well. So I usually have those thrown in there. A little secret compartment up here. This is where I keep the PDGA rule book. Uh, it's also available online, but I just it came with my membership this year, so I decided to throw it in the bag. This side, get your water bottle holder. And usually I'll have that thing full uh, with a, a really big bottle of water to get you through the round. I gotta stay hydrated out there or else your, your game will suffer. So it's definitely an important part. Next we have the Hammond's Plains uh, 2020 Disc Golf Bag Tags. Um, they look great. They're fantastic and it's always nice to be part of a you know part of a club and you know the Hammonds Plains Club is, is one of the best out there so if you're looking for a spot to join uh, some people that'll give you some friendly advice or help you out in any way definitely check out the Hammonds Plains Disc Golf Club uh, and you know find them on Facebook as well reach out to somebody and we'll be glad to take you for a round and show you the ropes uh, I also have my um, disc golf disc golfers code that came with the PDJ pack as well. Uh, it's just very good guidelines of kind of what the sport's all about. So, um, and then we have a temporary scorecard as well. So that's the bag itself. Uh, next, we're gonna get into the discs. So the first group that we're gonna go through is the putters. Um, I'm gonna run similar kind of template to what Brandon did, um, go through the putters, mid-ranges, fairway drivers, and then distance drivers. So first off, we're going to start with, uh, up here we got a putter pocket for my, this is what I use for my, my putting putters mainly. Uh, I have three putters up here. So currently, I am putting with the Classic Hybrid Judge is my main putter. I find it's very, very grippy. Um, it's a softer kind of rubbery plastic it feels and i can just you know get really good really good consistency with it um if my hands are like a little too wet or too you know slick i find that this does get a little slippery um so then i have a just a prime judge as well that i'll switch to uh, it all depends kind of on the weather conditions what's feeling the best in the hand um, i also have a lucid judge uh, which I will throw for like my throwing putter if I'm for approach shots or if I'm putting kind of you know 60 feet or out uh, just a little more durable it can hold up to the wind a little bit better too so I'll throw that one for for longer putts but also for my approach shots too and there's a couple other putters I do carry um, for throwing don't put with them anymore that's 
get those ones out of the main part of the bag here. So I'll go from most understable to most overstable. So the understable one I have here is the Deputy. Uh, this disc is phenomenal for playing in the woods with the tunnels or if you have a, a hard right hand turn you want to throw it on backhand line it'll turn right over. Uh, it's you know really good point and shoot disc. Um, Brandon uses them for putting. I tried using them for putting, felt a little understable for me. And I like the beads on the judge. So um, yeah, the deputy, great, great turnover putter. Um, can hit some solid lines with it. And then if the wind is a little up or if you want you know something that breaks hard to the left and doesn't turn over at all, uh, I use the Axiom Discs uh, Envy. A lot of people will use a Zone by Discraft. Uh, I tried using the Zone, I just don't like the feel of it in my hand. So this is a little slower version of the Zone. Um, but for me, this thing is so, so trusty. Um, I, in the tournament that I just played in, so many of my approach shots, we were on a golf course, so a lot of my approach shots had some wind that were affecting it. Uh, if I needed something that I knew wouldn't turn up, wouldn't go to the right, it would just go straight where I pointed it and then just fade right up to the basket at the end. It, this thing was so clutch for me the whole, you know, the whole two rounds that I played. So definitely a great disc. So that's all the putters. Um, don't, you know, don't carry too many different ones. Don't want to overcomplicate it. Um, I overcomplicate it in other parts of my bag. So you're going to about to find that out when I hit the drivers. Um, yeah, so next up next though is the mid ranges. So here we are, mid range time. I carry a few different molds of mid range. Um, this is going to be probably the part of my bag that changes next. Um, the reason for it is because I've been trying to go between manufacturers to figure out which one I like the most, which disc I like to hold the most, um, you know, kind of which one I get the most consistent throw from. So after doing all of it, I end up having about three discs that are pretty much the same, but they're all different molds, different manufacturers. Um, and then I have a couple go-tos that I'm gonna keep for sure. So what I'll do is I'll go through these and then I'll explain to you what I'm gonna be switching to or what I plan to switch to and then go from there. So up first, the most understable that I have for my um, mid-ranges is a Champion Mako 3. This was, outside of my starter set, the first disc that I bought, and it's still in my bag. This has been through so much, and like, if I need a straight shot, Heiser flip this thing right up to flat, it'll glide for days. If I, you know, going through you know, right hand turn tunnel, throw it flat, it'll just break and it'll never fade out. It just goes solid, whatever, whatever line it gets on, it stays there. Um, great beginner disc. It has, uh, I believe the numbers are 5500, zero, zero, uh, which is just your speed, your glide, your turn and your fade. So a zero zero turn fade, just point and shoot, uh, especially for, for beginner arm. Um, I highly recommend it for anyone starting out. It's definitely what got me into it and could throw it very consistently quite early in my, in my time playing. Up next, uh, we have the, it's hard to see this one, but it's a Moonshine Claymore. Uh, this disc was one that me and Brandon were in a tournament and he placed, I didn't, and he gave me one of his prize discs that he won. And he gave it to me because he was told and we were told that nobody uses the Claymore. Um, I love this thing. It is basically a Mako 3 that will come back. Um, if I, you know, I'm trying to get around a corner to the right and then have it fade back left at the end, it is just perfect for that. Um, I love the feel of it in the hand as well. Um, feels like it's a tiny bead on it um, compared to the Mako, but I just, I have such consistent throws with this thing. Um, I feel like it's going to be, it's going to be a tough decision between the Claymore and uh, one of my other ones for what, what it actually stays in my bag. 
Yeah, um, and the moonshine's supposed to glow, but I tried to dye the plastic and it turned out that I wiped off all the glow. So it doesn't glow anymore. And it's very hard to see because it's see-through. Uh, I recommend buying bright colored discs because that'll really help you when you think you lose one. Yeah, so the, the Claymore, um, and that's from Latitude 64. And up next, uh, actually up next is one that you can see up there. I had to, had to have it up for the video but it is also a part of my bag. This is my Glow Buzz. Um, I did a stencil dye on it as well. Took quite a long time to cut that out, but it turned out pretty nice. Uh, so this is a glow disc, uh, great. Um, but it also fits in with the Claymore and with my other one I have here. Um, basically, you know, throw it hard, it'll turn to the right and then fade right back left. Um, uh, this is why I'm in a dilemma right now. I have too many of the same disc and I need to find out which ones I want to stick with. And this has a similar feel to the Claymore, I find. Um, but I find I misrelease this a lot more than I do the Claymore. Um, so that's why I'm leaning towards that for my... to fill that slot in my bag. So, but I also have the stamp on this one, so I no longer can get rid of it. I have to keep it forever. It's also great for playing glow rounds. And the other one that I have that falls into the similar category is the Dynamic Discs Truth in Lucid. Um, I do feel like the one I got here, I don't know if it was a different run or what it was, but this is not a minus one turn. I can throw this just as hard as any of my other ones, and it will not turn right before it fades back left. Um, I don't know what happened to it. It's a very, very straight flying mid-range. So this one will probably stay in my bag because I don't feel like the flight numbers are right on it, and it'll, it kind of fills a gap that I don't have right now. So uh, it's very straight, and then it'll just fade out at the end. It's really, you know, very nice thing to have in the bag. So yeah, that's my um, Dynamic Disc Truth, and since it's a very nice white plastic, I will probably be doing a nice dye on that sometime in the near future. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And then probably one of my favorite discs is the Dynamic Discs Verdict. Um, this is very similar to, in Brandon's bag, he talked about his Buzz OS. This thing is beefy for a mid-range. Um, I have no worries about it turning if it gets caught up in headwind or any of that. It will just cut straight through and then just fade out. It, there's no, you know, it's a very overstable mid-range to have. And, you know, I do throw a lot of dynamic discs or the, the trilogy. So, um, Latitude 64 and West Side are all kind of part of the same trilogy grouping. I throw a lot of their discs and just the feel of them are so great. So. This verdict is a must have for headwind approach shots. Um, it's very, very predictable and absolutely love it in the bag. That's my mid ranges. Uh, so next we're gonna be getting into the bulk of my bag, which is fairway drivers. Uh, I got a lot of them. I've been testing some things out. Once again, I'm probably gonna, you know, try to reduce the molds once I figure out what I really like and it's still a work in progress. So let's get into them. Here we go. Uh, with the fairway drivers. There we go. So once again, we're going to start from most understable to most overstable. I seem to be missing a disc here. Oh no, okay, we're good. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start from actually set like go speeds, but also go by um, stability. So we're going to start with the Speed 7 discs. Um, my understable Speed 7 driver is a Maverick. Uh, this is a newer disc in my bag. I haven't really gotten to throw it too much any yet, but I feel like it's going to be really good for tunnel shots that need to fade out to the left at the end. Um, 
it's understable so I can throw it on a hyzer flip line, you know, just bring it up to flat and then it'll just fade out at the end. So I feel like any, you know, tunnels that go to the left would be a very, this would be a very good disc for. Um, like I said, I haven't thrown it very much yet. Um, I want to get out to the field and, and throw it a bit more. So until then, it's going to stay in the bag, but I'm not going to, not going to use it in clutch situations or in, you know, big important rounds or anything. So yeah, the Dynamic Discs Maverick. Then I do have one Disc Mania disc. Uh, it's pretty dirty, pretty beat up. Um, I got this when Dynamic Discs posted, or sorry, Disc Mania posted on their website that Simon Lazant was in their um, warehouse doing signings for anyone who ordered a Simon Lazant disc, or uh, sorry, a Disc Mania disc. So I did that. Um, you can see his signature on there. Um, I've made the mistake of throwing it a lot, but it's because it's a great disc. <laughs> um, the numbers are seven, six, minus one, one. Um, so it's, you know, it has a good turn, like slight turn on it and a slight fade back. Um, but this thing glides for days. Um, in the final round at the Hillsborough Huck event that I just played, um, hole number 16 there, you're shooting over a golf green way up a hill. It's about 300 foot hole. Um, but we're elevated throwing kind of over a gully and then the basket's almost kind of at level with us. The first round, I shanked it way off to the left with, uh, I can't remember what I used that one, but then the next round I said, you know, I need to find something I can trust, something I know the flight of. Uh, I was trying too many different things before. So I pulled out the FD and this thing went straight on the line I put it on slight bit of turn landed right at the top of the hill and I was able to uh, pitch up it's pretty big death putt so I pitched up and got my power and that is a big difference maker hole on the round um, so it was very nice to to get a power on that one especially after getting I think a double bogey the first round so you know this is a very very trustworthy disc where point and shoot um, I do recommend it for beginners as well. An FD is very, very neutral flying for a beginner. Uh, shouldn't have too much fade to the left either. So the Discmania FD. Next, we're going to go into my PDGA membership disc. So I signed up for the PDGA this year to get a number, um, be able to track my stats and also help grow the sport. The PDGA does great things and is the reason why the sport is the way it is. Um, so we have this really nice tree stamp. It's a Latitude 64 Explorer. It's a Speed 7 uh, stable fairway driver. It's very, very straight for my arm uh, with a little bit, of, um, little bit of fade at the end. Now, this disc is a little beat up. Um, I've used it quite a bit. So it'll actually turn a little bit first and then come back. Um, may need to get another one just for that dead straight shot but you know there's other things that I need to fill in my bag first and you know, not millionaires here so we'll, we'll take our time buying some discs so yeah that's the latitude of 64 explorer so that's all for the seven speeds uh, we're going to jump up to the nine speeds which there's four of them here this is my understable nine speed um, I haven't thrown this one much uh, I just did actually yesterday in new minus um, tested it out on one of the big field holes and I threw it further than my distance drivers this is the castaplast falk um, it is a very understable disc but the glide on this thing is incredible um, I put it on a slight hyzer it went flat and came up and actually turned right and just held that line. Um, it only has a one fade, so it doesn't come back too much. But the rip that I put into this thing was amazing compared, like I threw a few shots off of that tee and some of my distance drivers didn't even go this far. This thing just carried for days. So I'm very excited to get used to it more. Uh, I haven't used it too much, so I really want to I really want to get a good feel for you know how much hyzer to bring it to flat, how much hyzer to get a good turn, and you know certain things like that. So, Caspas Falk, um, it would also be a very great beginner disc too, uh, just like a couple of my other ones. Um, 
because of the understability. So when you throw it, it'll, you know, for a, a weaker arm or slower arm speed, you'll get a more straight flight, maybe even a little turn, and then it'll come back for you, as opposed to throwing something like an Explorer for a slower arm, it's just gonna hook left right away. So this might be a great beginner disc as well. So then my stable fairway, or, uh, nine speed, um, it doesn't have the name written on it, but there it is. It's a nice uh, hand-eye supply stamp. Uh, it's a dynamic discs getaway. So this disc is similar to the Explorer, but only in a, a nine speed, a little more beefy. Um, it's also a little beat up, so it does have a bit of a turn to it and a, a nice consistent fade. So this is more of my straight nine speed driver. Um, you know, I can hit pretty straight gaps with it or put it on a hyzer and holds the hyzer. You know, if I need to do a flex shot, it'll come back. It's pretty good, you know, pretty good disc. I don't throw it a whole lot because I have other things that I find fill the gaps um, for this one. If I, if I was to get rid of a disc for my, in my driver category, it would probably be this one, but um, it's very pretty and I like it. So I'll keep it in there for now. And I throw it every once in a while. Now we get to the overstable fairway drivers. Um, you'll see this in a lot of our videos that I throw, the Philadelphia Flyers dyed stamp. Uh, just for anyone wondering what disc this is, it's a Westside Discs Aughty. Um, I believe the numbers are 9304. I can kind of see them here. Yeah, 9304. So it's basically a meat hook. Um, now, Brandon had the meat hook counter in his last video. I've said it twice, I'm not saying it again. <laughs> there you go, that's my challenge for myself. So this thing, when you throw it, it will instantly go left. Uh, you can, now this one's beat up a bit, so I can get a little bit of glide before it dumps left, but it is, you know, very, very overstable. Um, great for headwind shots, great for spike hyzers, anything like that. And yeah, this was, probably the first really overstable disc I bought and I love it. I still use it to this day. It glides a bit more than it did before. It's also a great forehand disc. If I ever learn how to throw one, then I'll let you know. But yeah, very great disc. And then I have one more that I find to be more overstable than that, um, mainly because that one's beat up. This is the Axiom Discs Fireball. Um, a very, very low profile on this thing. Um, it feels great in the hands, you can get a good rip on it. It also, um, I use it for like tomahawk shots to cut through straight gaps. Um, you know, if I want to throw straight up and down, it goes through pretty nice. Now, the problem is, is that these two kind of overlap. But I think since I'm beating this one in quite well, it's becoming a more straighter flyer with consistent fade. A flyer, no pun intended. Um, so I think I'm just going to save this one to be my complete, you know, spike hyzer left shot. Um, I won't, I'll throw the, the Philadelphia Flyers disc a little bit more just because I don't want to beat this one in too bad. So I'm going to keep this one, you know, quite overstable. So if I, if I need to hook around a corner or do any of that or, you know, and then I, I have a disc for it. So there's the fairway drivers. to the fun discs, the beefy distance drivers. Now, I will say that as a beginner, I made the mistake of buying, you know, a, I think it was a 13 speed driver was my second disc after the Mako that I bought. Don't do that. If you are just starting out, um, unless you, you know, have a crazy natural ability to, to play, um, distance drivers are not for you. You know, you can get just as much flight out of any of the, the fairway drivers or mid ranges. So distance drivers usually, I mean, even myself, I find it's hard to get these things to do what they're supposed to do. Um, I got a little more snap now than I used to on my throw, and I know the circumstances when I should throw them. So, you know, different circumstances call for different discs, and I'll explain that kind of as well. Um, where I was on a ball golf course for the tournament wind was a big factor. And I'll kind of go through how each of these handle the wind 
and when I threw them in the tournament as well. All right, distance drivers. I have five of them. So starting with slower speeds and moving up to, so I have a 10, an 11, a 12, two 12s and a 13. So speed 10 is my Avenger SS. Uh, this thing is very, very understable. Uh, it is fantastic for throwing with a big tailwind. Uh, or even on big elevation downhill, uh, something that will definitely go right first before it has all the time to come back. It's, uh, like I said, tailwinds are big uh, in the tournament. Once again, the uh, on the ball golf course, we had the big tailwind on a few holes. I would throw this thing, you know, a little hyzer, pretty much flat though, and the wind would, like, it would start to turn, but the wind would just stabilize the disc. So with a tailwind, you want to throw more understable stuff, on a headwind, you want to be more stable because if you throw understable into a headwind, it's just going to turn right and be way gone. So you don't want to don't want to do that. So yeah, this thing was great for for those tailwind shots. Um, and yeah, if if I ever learn to throw a roller, I believe this is going to be my roller disc. Um, I just need to learn how to throw one. So up next, my speed eleven. Uh, once again, I'm doing some disc dyeing, so you can't really see a stamp on it. Um, kind of got some pink and orange and black and stuff through there. But this is my Dynamic Discs Renegade. Uh, up until probably a month or two ago, this was my distance driver. This is what I was throwing when there's no wind. You know, a nice little hyzer flip and turn and come back. And But over the last month, I've gotten... I don't know, my technique's gotten better and I can now throw a lot harder. And I find this now is turning too much and it never comes back. Um, I don't know, maybe this could be my roller, um, but it just, it's probably going to lose a spot in my bag because I don't throw it nearly as much as I used to. I have a replacement for that now and I'll show you that in a minute. But yeah, this one, I mean, I loved it when when my arm was a certain speed, but now that my arm's a little bit quicker, I find that I don't have as much use for it. So maybe I could turn it into a roller. We'll find out. Um, nice little stamp on it, though, or uh, die job. So anyway, that's the Dynamic Discs Renegade. Also, if anyone is starting to try out distance drivers and just bumping up from um, your fairways and you're just getting a bit more arm speed, Definitely try a Renegade. Um, I do believe that they might be out of production, but you can still probably find a few online somewhere. Um, but yeah, definitely a great disc. Just maybe not for me anymore. So this is the replacement for the Renegade. And it is a 12 speed Paul Macbeth. It says prototype distance driver, which is the Hades. Um, this one's just the prototype, but it it's the Hades. It is an amazing disc, uh, let me tell you. It glides for so long, and the turn on it, so the numbers are 12, 6, minus 3, and a 2. So the 2 fade on the end is nice because you know it'll break out of that turn eventually, so you don't need to worry about it going all the way right. Um, the minus 3 turn is a little tricky because if you throw it too flat, you might be way right. Um, you know, but if you throw it too much hyzer, it's not going to get all the way to flat, and then it's just going to hook out. So, really, you have to you have to be careful with it. But I find if I have a tailwind, um, throw this thing flat, and it just mashes. It goes so far. The wind getting under it just glides, glides, glides. It's so nice. Um, so that has now replaced the Renegade for me. It's a very, very, very good one. And now. We're into, yep, still 12 speed. So that was 12 speed. This was my first distance driver that I ever bought. Um, I believe so, yeah. The AT was my fairway. This is my first distance driver. And it is an Innova Star Destroyer. Uh, this thing's pretty beat up. Uh, might need to get another one sometime soon. But this is what I throw when I have a bit of a headwind. So when the wind's straight out, it's more of a stable. Um, 
I can't, I don't have the arm speed to get this to turn on a regular day. Um, you know, it might turn a little bit, but when I have a headwind, this is so reliable. I know it's going to, it will go right, but it's definitely coming back left. Um, I absolutely love this disc. It is, um, it saved me in, in the tournament, you know, first, very first hole. We're shooting over a little creek and onto a fairway and baskets off into the woods. So they're on the tree line. So <clears throat> it's part four. You just want to be out on the fairway somewhere, not too far left, not too far right. So you can have a straight angle at it direct headwind very first hole of the tournament but i knew if i threw this thing straight into it it's gonna go go right and come back left be right in the middle so it was a very very nice to have a a trusting disc for sure so um definitely a go-to for me and this one i just recently got back in my bag i lost this in the fall and it just came back to me probably a couple weeks ago this is a Nuke SS. It's a 13 speed, uh, minus three turn and a three fade. So similar to the Hades, it will go right, but it will definitely come back left. Um, the only problem is I need to be able to throw 13 speed in order to get it to turn and my arm's not quite there. So what I like this for though, is um, if I have you know a bit, of a bit of a tailwind, I can throw it flat and it'll turn a little bit. Um, but really this is for the the neutral days when there's no no big winds none of that if i throw this dead flat dead flat if i throw this completely flat it will do a nice little s flight and come right back uh, sometimes i might need to put a little bit of a anheuser throw on it to get the full flight out of it um, because otherwise i'll end up way too far left because i throw a bit nose up too so it's something i'm working on and that's the last distance driver in my bag. Um, I don't throw it a whole lot. Uh, my other ones, I all I know the other ones way better than I know this one. So once I get you know a few more throws with it, then maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll use it a lot more. So all right, so that's my bag, guys. That's the uh, that's the Hillsborough Huck Intermediate Champion bag. Also, just want to thank everybody for all the support you're giving on the channel. We're over 100 subscribers. I mean, when we first started doing this, we anticipated, you know, maybe we'd get 20, 25 people subscribing and checking out our videos. And now here we are, over 100 people. And, you know, being, you know, having the Maritime Disc Golf Association sharing our, our videos and our channel and, like, uh, having people like Ben Smith playing rounds with us. I mean, if, if nobody, if, if anybody out there hasn't checked out the Throw Canada documentary yet, go check it out. It is absolutely amazing. It shows kind of the disc golf in the Maritimes and what it's all about. And it highlights Ben and everything he's done for the sport in the Maritimes. He's a fantastic guy. Um, and hearing all the pros speak so highly of him. It's just such a, it's a very moving documentary. So I, I highly recommend it. It's called Throw Canada. Uh, definitely check it out. So we also, since we hit 100 subscribers, have a giveaway. So Brandon currently has the disc at his house. It's a Paige Pierce Stalker. So the way that this is going to work, unfortunately on YouTube, we can't just click and see a list of our subscribers and say, oh, look, pick one and it's, you know, randomly pick one and then we give it away. Because some people's settings are set to private. We can't actually see everybody that we have subscribed. So what we're going to do in the description of this video, there's going to be a link to a Google form that you will go on and fill out. It'll require that you put in your first and last name and your email address, and then it'll ask you to attach a screenshot showing that you're subscribed to the channel. Um, I will try to put a example of what that screenshot should look like right here. Okay, perfect. So if you put a screenshot like that, um, attach it and then submit the form, we are gonna get a copy of every form what we will then do is uh, this is going to, we're going to let it go for a week. So a week from today. Uh, well, let's see when this is released. Yeah. A week from today. And then 
once that's uh, the week's over, no more entries will be taken. We're going to do a random generation for all of the submissions and the winner will be announced. So I hope you enjoyed my in the bag video and maybe, you know, encourage you to try some of the discs out. Um, I also want to just say that if any of you want to go for a round, uh, Hammonds Plains, New Minus, Windsor, anywhere, hit, hit Brandon or myself up and, you know, if we're, if we're around, if we're free, we'll gladly take his out. Um, you know, we get a few extra discs kicking around. We can create you a little starter pack for, for a practice round. Um, you know, we'll sanitize it all first for you and everything. So, you know, with COVID going on, don't want to be you know too complacent with it. But um, if anyone's interested in going for you know a quick quick round to learn learn about the game, learn some rules and how to how to throw, um, we'll we'll teach you anything we can. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like the video. And if you are currently not subscribed, click on that subscribe button and enter the giveaway. Uh, we'll be doing the draw in a week. So, you know, get those entries in. Bye.